They are the alpha gravitons. <laughs> um, and so the other thing, um, there's also a kind of a category divide for um, people who are, you know, the kind of people I was just talking about with this attitude um, have a ton, a ton of stuff, right? So I often do these interviews in people's workshops. The fact that they have workshops at all, right? That's a huge bar um, for commitment to crafting, right? When you have a room, um, that you're you're a special kind of person at that point. Um, and I think that a lot of the um, and so I'm very interested in public and communal spaces um, for people learning to craft places that people can go um, when they're starting out that they don't have to feel like. I mean, this is, it, it really opens up the possibilities when you have, if it fails, you have six other kind, you know, kinds of fabric that you can use. Um, it starts to become a little bit less powerful, right? You're like, I'm just gonna throw this together. If it doesn't work out, it goes in the scrap. That's right. So I used to do that, right? I used to buy supplies for that one project. Um, that's a terrible idea, yeah, so I, um, I think this kind of an attitude is associated with having a lot of resources, and so I, I am really interested in um, studying. So uh, in San Francisco, there's craft gyms and things like that, where there was a craft gym, um, places like that, um, where people can go and have this kind of feeling, like these resources are abundant. Um, they're not precious. You can break them or ruin them and start over, um, and I think that adds to some of that healthy attitude. Um, and I, as I talked about in my uh, write-up, I am really interested in find, letting people find these places to hide while they do work. And a lot of, um, in education, people are constantly talking about um, publicness and sociability and collaboration. And, and I really, I'd like to preserve some piece of this for being private. Um, I think that there are times when people want to be alone um, when they're learning something new. Um, so this was the, knitting example, and this is what he actually um, said. He was just like, you know, that awkward getting to know you part of it. I, that was kind of poignant. Um, it's that, those early stages in particular where you have no idea, right? Your hands don't, they're not doing what you want them to do, nothing's working. Um, that, that kind of, that part of it, it can be really hard to do in front of someone. Um, and then I'm also really interested in people's people that do decide to dive into these social spaces, how they, um, how they choose to do it and how they process that. And, and I think when I talk to people who document their stuff, um, it, it really is this kind of presentation of self, right? Like their first how-to. Um, and so this, this guy told me you know, about his breakthrough, right? He, was t he wanted me to know, first of all, he was like, you should know that before this, you know, I was completely unknown, right? As a nobody, um, and then uh, and then you know he put his how to up and he sent an email to Hack a Day and he got on there and it was like he has he has participated right and that is the way that you you become a part of the community right you have to put something out there um, so I'm interested in that process as well and um, and who does and who doesn't decide to do that right so there's lots of invisible people in this. But I'm quite invisible. And then, really briefly, um, the other thing I'm interested in is um, the kind of the constellation of resources that people use. A lot of people study um, communities individually, and what I'm trying to do is understand how people move between um, websites. And you know, this idea that people have 800 tabs open at the same time, right? People aren't; they don't exist. The community doesn't exist on a website. Um, it's across lots of them. And so, this is kind of the the process that people um, go to, they might get inspiration on a variety of these different um, blog aggregator sites. They seek information all over the place. Um, and then when they're documenting, they draw on all these other resources. Um, and then broadcasting, they create a page of their own, right? And then they also send information about that page they created out back to a bunch of the resources where they initially drew information from. And so I'm interested in this as a big huge ecology of resources rather than one single place. So people often say, I want to build a, um, a forum for X. Can you tell me how to make it successful? And usually people who ask me this want to make money off of this, and they want to make sure that it, um, they keep people there and keep people coming back 
to there somehow um, encapsulate all of the activities like right on their site, right? Um, and it's just that's the downfall of so many projects. Many different areas. What trying to keep it all? Yeah, trying to cover every possible aspect. <laughs> yeah, and so I think I mean I think actually um, putting out um, being able to use. The, you know, being able to link to and use all of the resources, um, and being sure that you making sure that you have as many links out as you have coming in, um, it's actually to your to your benefit and to the participants' benefit. 